Hey, welcome along to this video. Great to see you digitally. Uh, I can't actually see you, don't get freaked out. This video is called Own Your Poker Opponents. And in a history making step, I'm presenting in a jumper for the first time on the channel. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is I want to appear friendly, family friendly, uh, the acceptable face of poker advice, because this video is about gutting your opponents, reaching in, pulling out their souls and bringing all of their chips with them. Uh, we're going to talk about how to really get inside your opponent's head and make a lot of extra chips. Now this is a core skill of any poker game because a big part of your edge is going to be from outthinking your opponents. Doesn't matter what level of play uh, you're at or what type of poker you're playing, that is always going to be true. It's always going to be you against them. Now I know you know that, but from uh, a whole cross section of different levels of student, this is a common problem that people don't actually think about that enough when they're playing. So it's very easy to get into your own head, to think about your own cards, your own situation, your stack, how the session's going, how your tournament's going. But all of that is uh, really secondary to thinking about how your opponent is viewing this particular hand, how they view you, what range they put you on and so on. If you like second level thinking, first level thinking is, you know, what am I doing? What's my hand? So this video is really going to try and give you some practical ways to improve that uh, side of your game. Because if you can start thinking about how your opponents view you, as opposed to just viewing your opponents, then you are going to take your game to the next level and you will make extra chips because you'll vary your play much more. Always remember, this game is played by human opponents. It is not played in a vacuum. And the biggest fault I see in this area from our students is that they want a specific way of playing. So they want, okay, ace, king, I've missed the flop, what do I specifically do next? And really a lot of times the question you should be asking is, well, what's my opponent's range? What's this situation? How does he view my range? How can I adapt what I do to take maximum advantage of that? So how do we translate that all into specific improvements for your game? I've got five ideas for you in this one. And idea number one uh, is gonna be to really ask what your edge is over your opponent. So edge question mark. This is kind of the big picture question and then the next four are gonna be actually playing uh, advice and like sort of concrete things to think about when you're in a hand. But first of all, big picture, you should always be asking what your edge is over your opponents. I have a trademarked two killer question format for that. For everyone you play against, you should be able to answer the questions what is my edge over this opponent? As in, what am I doing better than him? Or what mistakes is he making? Or what tendencies does he have I can take advantage of? And then the second question is, what's my game plan to put that into action? So if the answer to number one, what are his big mistakes, is he calls too much, to give you a simple example, then number two would be, I'm going to value bet more. Value bet weaker hands and make my value bets bigger because he calls too much, so I'm going to get paid off. So you should always be asking that about your opponents. And I know it can be tough online, maybe you don't have a lot of time with them, um, but still try and push yourself to try and observe more um, accurately and spend more of your energy observing your opponents at the table as the tournament or the session develops. Because if you don't do this, then everything else is difficult because you don't know how to adjust to each opponent. All right, so let's say we are uh, in a hand and we're trying to find ways to think about our opponents and how they view things uh, differently. How do we train ourselves to do that? Because it's not a natural thing to do, right? If you actually think about you playing a hand right now, it's not natural to kind of think about the hand from your opponent's view in real time. So I think you actually need to put something in place to try and make this a habit. So I'm going to call it the second person technique. So the second person is the person that isn't you. It's your opponent in this case, the villain, the person we're trying to take the chips off. If you can, try and train the habit where during a hand that's going to be a big decision, so calling a big post-flop three bet or you know some sort of post uh, pre-flop, I would say, or some sort of post-flop spot where you're trying to decide whether to shove or not or whether to call the shove, try and take some time out to step back from your hand and just think about the hand from your opponent's point of view. What has he seen you do? What has he seen you bet? How does he view you overall? You know, what, how would he play his strong hands in this situation? What are the chances he's bluffing in this situation? And I know you're going to be doing some of this anyway, because obviously it's part of poker, but I want you to spend some time training yourself to get out of your own head, 
in your mind's eye, kind of flip the table round so you're viewing you and ask yourself, um, you know, how does he view your hand? Because that's going to allow you to make much better decisions. If you look really strong to him, for example, and you have an uncapped range, so you could have, you know, the nuts, um, then you should be bluffing more in those spots. But they can be hard to spot if you're not thinking from their point of view. Now, the one place you should be doing this, it's kind of hard to do it in real time, although I'd suggest you try and do it more. The one place you must be doing this is in your analysis. You are doing your analysis, right? When you look at big hands you've played after the session or after the tournament, make sure you flip them round sometimes and ask, how does this look from my opponent's point of view? You'll really develop your uh, skills as a player and your ability to vary how you play. One step better than the second te person technique is a third person technique. Third person. So the third person is a person who's not in the hand at all. Not you and not your opponent, someone not in the hand. Again, this is another thinking technique, another thinking device. I'm not suggesting you use these every hand you play, by the way. I'm just giving you some ideas to help you own your opponents more. And the third person technique is to view the hand from the side or uh, objectively as if you're not involved at all. So you're not thinking about your hand and your actions, you're not thinking from your point of view, you're not thinking from your opponent's point of view, you're thinking from an objective or third party point of view. Now the way that I do this is I see the hand in my mind's eye in a hand replayer. So even if I'm live, I see it in a hand replayer, the one that I use uh, for hand analysis, and that takes all of the subjectivity out of it. The other way you could do it is, especially if you're live, this works well, actually think about standing on the rail and see how the hand looks. Now the reason we do this is to get rid of subjectivity because you are emotionally attached to the hand you're in. You know, you want to win, you're trying to win. Whereas this is allows you to take a mental step back. You may well have noticed that poker is way easier to play from the rail or to play when watching TV or watching a stream. It's so much easier to know who's strong and who's weak. So this is an attempt to do that in real time. And once you get rid of that subjectivity, you can often get a much better read on what your opponent has and what they're trying to do. All right, have fun with those two thinking techniques. Now, tip number four is flexibility. Flexibility. I said at the start of this video that one of the faults I see students have all the time is they're trying to get a specific set of rules as to what to do with poker. Now, there are some rules that you can make that will stand you in pretty good stead. And at the very most, the most advanced level of poker, game theory um, level of play, you're actually sort of trying to develop uh, rules if you want to look at it like that. However, everything in poker remains situational. And so in order to win the most, you are going to need to be situationally adaptive in every hand that you play. So what I mean by that is you need to be completely flexible to the game conditions and your opponent conditions. So if you want to own your opponent and make the maximum amount of chips from them, you need to be prepared to be as flexible as possible in the way that you play. So rather than thinking my style of poker is X, think about yourself as someone that adapts to the game and the hand that you're in at all times. So let me give you an example of what I'm blabbering on about so it makes it a little bit easier to understand. Let's say you've got an opponent who's got 100,000 chips in front of them, and they are such a big calling station that they will call any bet for um, regardless of their hand, and you have a strong hand, right? Even if there's only 1,000 chips in the middle, what should you bet? Well, you should obviously bet 100,000, right? Because you're going to get paid 100,000. Now, sadly, that situation doesn't arrive very much, but I'm giving you an example because if, let's say, you do have someone that will pay off big bets, you should be making big bets. If you're betting 800 into a pot of 1,000 every single time you value bet, right, you're just always betting that exact amount, then you are leaving chips on the table against calling stations because if they would pay you 2,500, well, you've just, like, you haven't lost, but you've missed out on, you know, uh, triple your money. So... It's really important to be flexible in your thinking if you want to own your opponents. Be prepared to bluff more against tight players and semi-bluff more against tight players. Be prepared to shove against players that don't want to risk most of their stack in the tournament. Be prepared to value bet more against calling stations and so on. The key to all of this is to go through all of these processes, make the best read that you can, but then to actually take action and actually be flexible in how you take action. 
So that's my last piece of advice for you. Commit. Commit to backing your reads. I can never spell commit and I keep including it in videos and, and then have to go and check the number of M's and the number of T's. It's absolutely shocking. You know what I mean? That's the important thing to understand. <laughs> commit. Um, I should just commit to one spelling. I'm aware of the irony. Um, so none of this and none of any of the study you do in poker or any of your efforts to improve are worth anything if you don't back your judgment, right? Now, if you're not an expert high stakes player yet, then your judgment is sometimes, maybe even often going to be wrong. But that's not what's important. The only way you can make your judgment better is by going through a thought process, trying to get inside your opponent's skin, make the best play, commit to that play, even if it's like one that perhaps carries a bit of fear with you, like a big bluff or you know a big cool down or whatever it is, and then analyze afterwards, right? You cannot second guess yourself in, a mom in the moment, okay? So to make that real, why don't you make two commitments following this video? The first is you're always gonna think about your opponents or you're gonna use these techniques or whatever techniques work for you to think about your opponents more during your game as a whole and during specific hands that you play. And commitment number two, once you've made a read, you're always going to back it, even if it involves a bluff or a scary cool down. All right, I sincerely hope this has given you value. I think this stuff is really important. You should be thinking hard about how to get more out of your opponents and maximize your wins, because that's what separates consistent winners in poker from players that don't get to that level. Uh, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this video a lot. If you have, then press a like. Uh, so that we know and leave us a comment or a question. I'd love to know what you think and if you've got any questions or any other topics you'd like to see a video about from the channel. Uh, speaking of you and your poker, if you want to take it to the next level, there's a link underneath this video. You can click the link and get our very latest um, poker advice. The best free training we put out is through that link. So go over to the site, enter your email and you'll get some great free training uh, which will really help you with your game. If you're enjoying the channel, then let's make the relationship official. Click subscribe to become a subscriber and hit the notifications bell so that you always hear uh, pronto when we release a new video. All right, I've made the mistake of making this video in a jumper very near a uh, internal heating device in my house. And so I'm very hot now. I'm going to go and have a little drink and a lie down. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you again very soon.